Ishi, hold up, give me a minute.
Hey, View Youth. Hey, I am so excited to be with you guys. Physically, we are unable to be together, but uh, we're going to make ways and we're going to find ways to still be together in community as much as we can. Uh, even if we're not physically together, we have different things that we're offering. Um, I'm excited to share tonight through uh, through this platform, uh, View Night. And I have, uh, I have a quick teaching that I just want to encourage you guys with and really help build your faith and and, uh, and just remind you that Jesus is good and he's in control. And so before we get into that, I just want to remind you guys every Tuesday, if you've been wondering what we're doing on Tuesdays for Tuesday Hustle, we are doing a Zoom virtual Tuesday Hustle at 10 a.m. And it's been phenomenal. We are all walking through the book of Matthew together, and it's just been so rich and, uh, and just fun just to be together um, on a Virtual Tuesday Hustle. So I want to make sure you guys are invited to that. And then following this service right here, what we're doing is after uh, I am done, we're going to have a link for Zoom, and we're going to do this thing called Let's Talk. What Let's Talk is, is right after the service, I'm going to be uh, in a Zoom link with our leaders, and we're just going to have a discussion based on this conversation and what encouraged you, what are you walking through. More than information, I just want to help you guys uh, just follow Jesus in this time and be able to ask the questions that you have and really know that ultimately we're here for you and we're here to help build your faith through it. So before we get started, uh, let me just pray and then uh, and then let me jump into this teaching. Father, thank you for View Night. Thank you for these amazing students. Speak to us, encourage us, and uh, just be with us tonight, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I want to give you guys a context to a verse that I have been personally just reading. Uh, it's out of the book of Jeremiah, and it's actually Jeremiah 29. So if you have a Bible, you can go ahead and go to Jeremiah 29. And uh, before this, I want to set up the context of the book of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah is a prophet that God speaks to that, sa- that tells 
uh, Israel, God's people, that uh, if they don't change their ways, then God is going to send them into what is known as exile. Exile is when they are kicked out of their land, their comfortability, uh, where they know everything about uh, just who they are and where they are about their living situation. God literally removes them and puts them in a different territory, an unknown territory, an unfamiliar territory. So Jeremiah is a prophet. So the whole book of Jeremiah is based on Jeremiah uh, speaking to Israel that if they don't don't uh, if they don't change their ways, then God is going to exile them uh, until their whole hearts turn to Him. So Jeremiah is going through the book and he's warning them over and over, and they're just not listening. So when we get to Jeremiah. 29, they've already been exiled. They've already been removed from Israel and put into a place called Babylon. Babylon uh, is a, uh, a territory occupied by a army called the Assyrians, and, uh, and they were taken into exile by uh, the Assyrians into a place called Babylon. And so I want to set that up because when we read Jeremiah 29, um, you'll kind of get the context to what it means. So now we're going to read Jeremiah 29, 4 through 7. So go ahead and go there in your Bible. Jeremiah 29, 4 through 7. I'm going to read it. It says this, This says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. He says this, Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives as your sons and your daughters. Take wives as your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters and multiply there. And do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For if it flourishes, you too shall flourish." And uh, I want to share this quick thought out of Jeremiah because we are all in a very unfamiliar place right now. Nobody has dealt with anything like this. And uh, just as your pastor from View Youth, I'm just trying to navigate how do we continue to bring the gospel message of Jesus to you guys, offer platforms so we can be encouraged and built up in our faith. And uh, it's just unfamiliar. And just like the people of Israel, they were taken out of what was common to them and they were placed in an unfamiliar territory. And I wrote this down that I just I really want um, I really want us to grasp as I'm going through this change can cause us to lose focus or it can cause us to gain a new focus. And so during this time, I really want to challenge you. Uh, what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on what was or what could be? Are you focusing on what we've lost or what we're going to gain from this? Because one thing that is common throughout the whole Bible is that God is faithful. God is always faithful to his children. He never leaves us and he never forsakes us and he'll never put us in a position to fail. He is always with us. Wherever we are, God is there. He occupies every single Space and so uh, I just want to give you three quick things that um, that I wrote down. So if you're taking notes, write these three things down. It's called three things to occupy quarantine 2020. Three things to occupy quarantine 2020. The first one that I really want to encourage you guys is this: get big, not small. Get big, not small. We have the opportunity right now to respond in a way that will either deflate our faith in who Jesus is or it, sh it will increase our faith in who Jesus is. When God sends Jeremiah to speak on the behalf of Israel, he says to warn them. And then when they don't listen to his warning and they're sent into exile, God says, okay, you're going to be here a little while. You're going to be here a little bit longer than you think. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to build houses, plant vineyards, build relationships, and cultivate the land where you are. Get big, not small. And if there's anything I want to encourage you with, View Youth, if there's anything that you walk away with, it's that use this time to get big and not don't stay small. 
When we stay small, our faith stays small. Our expectancy of God stays small. Our understanding stays small. And God is saying, just because you're in an unfamiliar place doesn't mean that I'm not with you. If we have a big God, we have small problems. But if we have a small God, we'll have big problems. The second one is this. Don't be driven by feelings. Be driven by your faith. I'm going to say that again. Don't be driven by feelings. Be driven by faith. Whatever you allow to drive you in this season will lead you to a destination. Whatever we allow to lead us and drive us day by day, whether it's social media, whether it's the news, whether it's negativity, whether it's our music that we're listening to, whether it's the things that we're looking at uh, through the internet uh, that's filling our mind and contaminating our soul, whatever we're allowing us uh, to, to lead us is leading us to a destination. We can't be driven by feelings. We have to be driven by faith. I don't know about you, but I am an emotional person. So some days I'll wake up and I will be on top of the world and I'll be like, I am, I'm feeling good today. And then there's other days where, um, to be honest, I'll worry a little bit more. I'll be a little bit more anxious and fearful. Um, and my feelings just kind of waver. But one thing that has not wavered during this entire time is my faith and who Jesus is. Because when I look at my faith, my faith is not tethered to something that is uh, is movable. It's tethered to an anchor. And an anchor has a rope. And that rope is attached to something. And then it's anchored to something. My faith is not anchored to the circumstance that is around me. It's anchored to the cross. It's anchored to the empty tomb. It's anchored to the Easter story that's coming up. It's anchored to Jesus saying that he is the son of God, the way, the truth, in the life and that he is the fulfillment of everything. He's God incarnate. He's God with skin on and God walks with us and made a way for us, conquered sin, disease and death and tragedy. And he literally put everything underneath his feet so that we would not have to fear. If there's anything that you can fight against in this time, it's your, it's your feelings overriding your faith. But in this season, we need to make sure that our faith is greater than our feelings because whatever we allow to lead us will drive us to a destination. The third thing is this, and the final thing is grow, don't wither. Grow, don't wither. I love in the book of Jeremiah when God says, build houses, plant vineyards, get ready. You're going to be here a while. Cultivate the land, build, uh, build things, Uh, build relationships, build your faith in this time, encourage your friends, encourage your family, read your Bible, read God's word, play worship music, have Zoom calls, talk about what you're feeling with uh, for that day with your leaders and people that are around you. But this is the season to grow and not wither. And when I think of things that are withering, I think of things that haven't been watered in a long time. And what happens is when things aren't watered, when our soul is not watered with God's word, with community, with people that are around us, when our soul is not being nourished, our faith begins to wither. It loses its strength because when our faith is not tethered to relationships in God's word, it is movable. It is shakable. We need God's word now more than ever to make sure that in this season we are, as God's people, we are growing. We're not just growing, we're flourishing during this time because God is not unfamiliar with the season that we're in. I want to say that again. God is not unfamiliar with the season that we are in. He went through everything to make sure that nothing would conquer his people, that we would always be able to walk in triumph. And so make sure, grow, don't wither, because we will get through this. I promise you that. Our God is faithful. Our God is just. Our God is gracious. He is merciful. His mercies, the Bible says, are new every morning. The Bible says in Psalms 94, when my cares are many, Your consolations bring me joy. Basically, your word, 
your voice, your presence, it brings me joy. It reminds me that you are who you say that you are. And I promise you, dear youth, I want to encourage you. This season is not a destination. It is just a season. But how you respond in this season will reveal that um, your faith is not right now just being um, tested. Our faith right now is being revealed. Our faith is not just being tested. Our faith is being revealed. And in these seasons, I want to make this very clear before we wrap up. In these seasons, believers believe. Believers believe. We believe in better days. We believe in a triumphal God. We believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We believe that God is going to take care of his people, that his grace is sufficient in our time of weakness. And so I want to leave you this one thought. We will get through this. The question is, who will you be on the other side? We will get through this. The question is, who will you be on the other side? I know for me and my house, we're going to be flourishing. We're going to put our trust and our faith in God. No matter what circumstance comes our way, our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all throughout the Bible, he's always rescued his people. So I want to remind you guys, we will get through this. The question is, who will you be on the other side? So three things to occupy quarantine 2020. I hope that encouraged you. I love you. Make sure right after this, please jump into the Zoom call and let's talk. I want to talk with you guys. I have so many more notes, but I really wanted to keep this short to encourage you. But I have so many more things that I would love to share with you about this verse that I, that I learned, and I want to have a dialogue. I want to have a conversation. I want to know how your faith is doing, and I want to know how we can stand with you during this time and pray with you and be there for you and, uh, and help you understand that Jesus is who he says he is, and we're going to be all right. So make sure right after this, join us. Let's talk. And then Tuesday, virtual hustle. I can't wait to see you guys. I love you, and I hope you're doing well. Be filled by the Spirit of God and be out. We love you.